Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, and on today's program, we'll be exploring the critical cybersecurity landscape for telecom operators in Asia, focusing on global threats, the dual role of AI in defense and offense, and essential priorities for building future resilience. And joining me now is Vikas Dyer, who is global cybersecurity leader at Nokia. Hello, Vikas. Thanks very much for, for joining us today. Can I start by asking you, what do you think are the most pressing global cybersecurity threats for telcos and how do these manifest in Asia's unique threat landscape? Thank you for the opportunity for sharing our viewpoints. And uh, we are at a very interesting stage uh, where we have seen uh, so many attacks which have happened in recent past. And this was clearly reflecting in the report, the threat intelligence report that uh, Nokia came out with uh, a month ago. And it draws a clear picture uh, that some of these attacks which happened, uh, and, and to name a few, for example, uh, the Salt Typhoon attack, which uh, hit the headlines uh, sometime late last year, uh, is, is a case in example where we saw uh, that uh, the attackers uh, ran a, a very systematic espionage campaign uh, to infiltrate into those networks, and they were able to uh, spy on uh, some of the uh, call detail records and, and also able to track and intercept lawful intercept systems. Uh, and and uh, this uh, was a very typical kind of an attack which was discovered after there was uh, an entry or an implant which was made a couple of years ago. That means the attackers were dwelling in the system for many years and uh, they were discovered uh, you know, after a couple of years. What it did was it impacted uh, many customers across 80 countries. So, so this was again uh, an attack which was low and slow attack. It used uh, stealth techniques, some of the living of the land techniques, which means that uh, some of the legitimate network tools which are used for uh, monitoring activities uh, by administrators, uh, they actually used uh, those techniques to blend in their activity so that they go undetected. Other attacks which we saw in other parts of the world, uh, we saw that, uh, you know, we, we, we saw there is a rise in, in custom built malware, which is specifically targeting uh, your telco uh, infrastructure. And uh, so the light basin implant and uh, GTP door is a case in example, because these uh, attacks were targeting uh, critical infrastructure and especially the, the telecom operators and they were using custom built malware as well. Most of the breaches that we see has got, uh, you know, insider involved in, in some way, either with a malicious intent or accidentally as well. Uh, so from, from Asia standpoint, there were instances where the patching was uh, missing, which means because of missed patches, there were vulnerabilities involved, uh, which were exploited by the attackers. And, and this uh, uh, was, was very, very critical because unless and until you patch those critical vul vulnerabilities, uh, you will always be attractive breeding ground for, for op uh, malicious operators in general. So. I would say that, uh, you know, these were some of the, uh, you know, leading trends globally as well as in Asia Pacific. Now, why, uh, you know, telecoms in Asia Pacific are, uh, are, are going to attract these, uh, you know, malicious operators uh, attacking them because of the fact that, uh, you know, Asia is right now on a path of uh, digital transformation. So you have seen uh, many operators modernizing their networks, coming out with innovative services. So be it 5G, 4G, or 2G or 3G, which is still prevalent there. So it is a it is a mix of technology vendors, and you still have legacy and new technologies as which are still at interplay. Now, having said that, what what it what makes uh, you know this this combination uh, lethal is because your attack surface uh, you know goes up uh, by a few notches and and what it means is that when you have a large attack surface obviously you will have uh, you know these attackers who will come and try to exploit uh, you know the weak points so th this is one uh, secondly i would say that uh, you know uh, typically uh, when you when you look at uh, you know uh, 
various uh, you know operators they are not having the right tools in place to have a uniform view of their uh, you know telecom infrastructure because you have uh, a siloed view and and you are not able to uh, have deeper visibility into your network domains and if you don't have visibility you will have blind spots and you will see you know some of these uh, advanced attacks uh, being launched on your network and you will not be able to detect that. Thanks so much, Vikas. That's, that's really interesting. Thanks very much for detailing all of that. A lot of information there. Can we move on to AI? How is AI transforming cybersecurity for telcos, both globally and in Asia, uh, as a threat and also a, a defence? You know, what should operators prioritise for AI-powered defences and how are you helping them? AI is uh, a reality. It has been used by uh, by attackers, by uh, adversaries, and uh, for offensive purpose, and as well as uh, you know by enterprises and and telcos for defense mechanism as well. So it is a force multiplier. So what it has done is that AI and Gen AI technologies have lowered the barriers of attack. So what it means is that uh, just by using these tools. Uh, and having low skills, you are able to launch some of these advanced attacks, uh, and and it is very difficult to uh, figure out uh, how how do you you know detect and and be able to contain these threats because some of these campaigns which are run, uh, which are powered by AI and Gen AI tools, uh, are are pretty incisive in nature. So what it means is that uh, you know you have social engineering campaigns uh, powered by AI. Uh, they look so, so very real. So, uh, you know, your phishing emails, your deep fakes, uh, they are so real that uh, uh, humans fall prey to this. And because of that, uh, you have these uh, attackers who penetrate into, into the network and then cause damage. Uh, also, the, the polymorphic, uh, you know, malware, which, which gets created by these uh, attackers means that they are changing the the fingerprints or the signatures so fast that they evade the traditional tools. Uh, what it means is that uh, your signature based or your rule based detection tools, the traditional tools are not able to detect uh, these advanced attacks. Then uh, the automation of uh, recon exercise, which means you are trying to discover where the vulnerabilities are at a scale and speed uh, where humans uh, are not able to cope uh, also means that unless and until you have AI-driven security, you will not be able to detect such advanced steps. So uh, going back to the defense mechanism, uh, we are recommending our uh, you know, service providers to be able to uh, use AI machine learning, Gen AI technologies in various aspects of their business. So uh, they have to be insertion points at, at different stages. So for example, uh, you need to uh, leverage AI machine learning uh, for user entity and behavioral analytics, which means you need to monitor every user behavior, every device, every system, uh, the traffic that flows through it and form a baseline. Uh, if you form a baseline of behavior, any departure uh, from the baseline will help you detect any anomalous activity and then you should be able to uh, stop those uh, attacks uh, well in time. Uh, secondly, you also need to use uh, AI machine learning for uh, you know endpoint detection and, and for also for network detection and response capabilities as well. Uh, so one thing uh, one should be mindful of is that uh, the traffic that flows through, the signaling traffic that flows through the telecom uh, networks uh, is, is varied. So you still have SS7, diameter, GTPC uh, signaling protocols, which are prevalent. Uh, and, and any anomalous activity or any abuse of these protocols need to be detected uh, through various mechanisms and AI machine learning helps there a lot as well. And then when you have uh, an overarching layer, which is the security and operation center, which uses a, a SOAR or an XDR system, uh, you are able to then quickly detect these advanced threats, correlate, contextualize, and be able to analyze those threats in real time. Uh, 
uh, and and also once once you have done the detection you are able to then uh, provide a response which is in milliseconds and not in minutes as well so mind it uh, whenever uh, any attack uh, or an attacker is within your system you need to make sure that you are able to quickly uh, get them out of the system because the more they dwell within the network the more damage they can cause and uh, that could be fatal as well so so these are uh, you know some of the mechanisms which uh, you know we are trying to recommend to telco telcos in general so that they they are able to cope with these kind of advanced threats great thanks very much vikas and it's not just ai is it um let's let's talk about the the key human and operational security challenges for telcos globally and in asia what immediate steps should they take and how does nokia's approach to operational resilience help address these gaps absolutely uh, insider threat uh, happens to be one of the key vectors uh, which is plaguing a uh, lot of uh, telecom service providers and mission critical service providers uh, because of the fact that uh, insiders whether it is employees or you're talking about any third party suppliers or contractors who have legitimate access to your systems so they are uh, you know exposing uh, your your data if if they are not managed properly either accidentally or because of any malicious intent so you need to watch insider activity with great deal of uh, discipline and you need to have right tools in place so i was talking about uh, monitoring behaviors of of users as to how uh, are they accessing uh, you know the network resources or some of the critical network resources which are holding uh, data uh, which is uh, a critical sensitive data of subscribers and and you need to monitor and and keep a baseline so if uh, you have uh, uh, an employee or or any contractor who has got uh, privileges uh, to access certain certain data you need to make sure that uh, you know you have uh you know they have the right privileges uh or or the least privileges so to speak uh, their identities are monitored and uh, every single activity uh, is being logged and audited as well uh, also telco networks are so very different from it networks uh you need to have uh you know the availability which which uh, which needs to be uh, you know five times uh, nine availability you need to make sure that there are no latencies introduced in the system so you need to have the right patching in place uh, so that you know your assets are not vulnerable and you are able to then provide uh, the right uh, uh, you know protection to the network as well now coming back how do you uh, have the right mechanisms in place so automation is the key even for uh, patching as well uh, you need to have uh, you know automation in terms of vulnerability assessment and pen testing uh, figure out what the vulnerabilities are and then quickly prioritize as to how do you need to patch your systems uh, so that uh, you know attackers are not able to exploit that as well for insider threat we have been recommending uh, uh, you know tools uh, for example the privilege access management tool which is tailor made for telco networks uh which can make sure that any resource who's accessing uh or any individual or a machine who's accessing a particular resource within the network is uh, uh is is uh, there is an identity around it we are managing those identities properly and and uh, we provide them least privileges so that they they access those resources which they are required to do uh as as per their their, their role within the system uh, also the fact that uh, you know you also need to rotate the credentials uh, so that you know you don't have any password leakage etc uh, and and you need to audit any any session uh, which uh, is being conducted by by these resources so if you have these kind of uh, you know mechanisms in place uh, ueba uh, privilege access management tool uh, you know automation uh for uh, you know uh, vulnerability assessment and then patching i think telecom service providers would be uh, relatively and and better protected oh it, it's so complex with multi domains and, and multi vendors uh, final question vikas um I, I'd, i'd like to ask you if we look at the evolving global cybersecurity landscape what would you say are the main priorities for telcos in building future resilience and how do these translate into specific actions for operators in asia 
So if I were to call out priorities for uh, you know telecom operators, I would say that they need to have uh, a unified view of their uh, telecom infrastructure. So you have multiple domains uh, right from uh, your core networks, radio access networks. You have uh, you know the network infrastructure uh, and 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 the fact that you have uh, you know 4G 5G networks which are service uh, based architecture and then you have legacy networks which is 2G 3G uh, you need to have uh, a view which basically provides you a comprehensive visibility into your network and and domains and and you need to have a telecom specific uh, you know security operation a tool uh, which we call it as uh, you know we have a netguard uh, portfolio which which provides you with with an xdr capabilities uh, so that you are able to detect these advanced threats well in time you are able to correlate uh, you know map them onto the network topology uh, come out with a threat score and be able to provide those insights to a sock analyst to be able to then take actions uh, and and remediation is also a key because detection is one side of it and then what you do with those insights what do you uh, you know take uh, you know further actions on those insights is very critical as well so uh, having having the right detection in place and then uh, in the incident response uh, leveraging ai gen ai technology uh, is is something that is key as well uh versus uh, some of the it tools which uh, have been uh, you know asked to manage the telco specific uh, you know telemetry etc have not been very successful so we uh, always recommend that you need to have purpose built custom tools for uh, telco uh, specific attacks that you need to protect right uh, secondly uh, i i would uh, like to call out that you need to have a proactive uh, you know approach to security rather than a reactive one so what proactive security means that you need to have uh, ai machine learning tools gen ai capabilities uh, to go for threat hunting so you need to go and and look for threats within your network rather than uh, being reactive and waiting for threats to hit and then you detect and then you remediate them as well so if you have a proactive hunting approach uh, then you will be able to uh, you know detect some of these zero day uh, uh, you know attacks well in time and be able to then uh, remediate uh, uh, with with least damage or no damage at all uh, thirdly i would say that uh, you know one should be monitoring uh, the behavior of uh, every single person or entity which is within within the system so for example user entity behavioral analytics is absolute key uh, also uh, the you know principle of zero trust uh, architecture is is another uh, area which needs to be followed which means that every single activity within the network needs to be to be verified yeah, you need to have least privileges uh, in place uh, you need to manage identities very properly and and make sure that uh, any network activity which is happening uh, you are able to see those activities and take proactive action on those i think these are some of the priorities uh, which which uh, you know telcos need to have in asia great advice but we must leave it there for now vikas good talking with you and thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us today thank you very much